I'm Alexandra Jones, the editor of The Ophthalmologist, and I'm here today with Dr. Florian Zutter. Welcome. And first of all, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? I'm an uh, ophthalmologist based in the eastern part of uh, Switzerland in Herisau. We are a small private clinic. And by trade, I'm actually a medical retina specialist, uh, not a glaucoma guy, um, but I do, of course, general uh, ophthalmology, uh, ophthalmic surgery, cataracts and, and things like this. So um, it sounds weird that I speak about a glaucoma procedure, but uh, that's the point. You don't have to be a glaucoma surgeon for this. We're here today to talk about the new HFDS technology could you tell me how it fits into your glaucoma treatment algorithm? Well, in the past, there was a, a gap in the glaucoma toolbox in the moderate, early to moderate glaucoma patients. I mean, the clearly early patients were treated with uh, drops and then the late stages uncontrolled glaucoma were going for a trabeculectomy. And in between, there were these cases where you were observing a deterioration, but you, you knew it, there will be some surgery, but it was too early for, the, for a trap. Um, and there was this sit and wait. Uh, of course, there was the emerging option of uh, minimally invasive glaucoma procedures. Uh, but they usually are quite not easy to be done. Um, there is usually an, an expensive implant or two involved. So you're kind of reluctant to go ahead if it's not needed. And HFDS really is closing that gap. So it's a, it's a mi really minimally invasive procedure. It's, uh, most of these patients sooner or later will have a, a cataract and it's, it's perfect to be combined. And it's really something that you can do in an early or moderate uh, glaucoma patient that, that clearly needs more than drops, uh, but will not go for a trap. Could you tell me about your adoption journey and the learning curve for using the HFDS technology? Well, for me, the learning curve was, was really short because I have uh, used the prismatic gonio lens uh, before. I have been doing uh, goniotomy, uh, ab interno, at uh, surgery on the channel, I have done uh, mix, uh, sorry, Zen and, and other mixed procedures. So it's actually uh, the learning curve is using the gonio lens. Uh, the procedure itself is really straightforward. So for me, it was basically just do it. Uh, if you're not familiar with the gonio lens, this is uh, what you have to practice and you can easily practice this in the wet lab. Uh, the pig eye is a beautiful model, and if you do not have access to a uh, wet lab, there is a dry lab kit uh, where it can be um, uh, practiced easily. Uh, I would recommend then the first procedures to be done, obviously, in a pseudophagic patient who is maybe a little bit myopic because there's more space in the angle, and also with a shallow, um, not deep set eye, so in a shallow orbit. Uh, and then it's straightforward. That's great. So compared to other devices, would you say that this one is quite easy to use? Yes, definitely. It's, uh, uh, as I said, the gonio lens is the gonio lens, but the procedure in the angle is, is very straightforward. It's much easier than, than fiddling a, a stent in or, or something like this. Uh, it, it's really finding the correct spot, pressing a little bit in and then uh, foot on the foot pedal and, and that's it. It's really, uh, it's, it's not difficult to be done. That's brilliant. And how has the HFDS technology impacted your practice? Well, it actually has really put me at ease with these intermediate uh, glaucoma patients where you always, you know, were worrying, shall I do something and I don't want to do a trap. Um, it, it really has uh, a great impact on these patients. Um, you can do a surgical procedure that will really lower the pressure. It Usually it will not go down to 10 or 12 like in a trap, but it will be in the mid team. Um, it will reduce the, the number of glaucoma uh, drops. Um, so I, it has influenced my um, practice a lot. I, in the past, I would do maybe a combined mixed cataract procedure in one out of 50. 
uh, patients. Now I do a combined procedure in maybe one out of 15 or 20. Um, I have basically uh, stopped using all the other uh, mix options. I have replaced it completely with uh, HFDS uh, because it's it's straightforward. There is um, a, a not need, no need for for multiple follow ups like in other procedures. So um, yes, I, it it solves the problem in a significant portion of these patients. That's fantastic. And speaking post operatively. Could you tell me about the intraocular pressure lowering and also the anti-glaucoma medi medication reduction? Is it easier to control the patient afterwards with fewer medications? Well, there, there are quite good um, publications out there with a follow-up uh, to up to six years, I think. And uh, my personal experience really mirrors these uh, publications. So the, the pressure will be, you know, in the mid-teens and usually you can get rid of at least one, if not two, glaucoma uh, drops, which of course makes the patients happy because of uh, less red eyes, less uh, side effects from, from the drops. Uh, but but yes, the pressure will not be 10 like in a, in a trap. So in a really advanced uh, uncontrolled glaucoma, I st still do traps. But um, but it's a solution for many patients that are not yet in the in the stage where they really have the indication for a trap. And are there any specific risks or complications that you've observed during the procedure or post-operatively? using the HFDS technology? I mean, the, the most significant intraoperative problem is a little bit of, of bleeding out of the angle, um, which happens in most of these procedures done in the angle. And of course, there also, if, the, if there is a little bit of bleeding, that's a good sign that uh, you've done it correctly. Um, it can be annoying to stop the bleeding at the end. So you sometimes really have to wait and, and irrigate the eye and, 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 and uh, bring the pressure up by hydrating the, the uh, uh, paracentesis. Um, and of course, a, po a portion of these patients will have a little bit of um, blood in the uh, anterior chamber on day one, and there will be a little bit more inflammation than if you do a cataract alone, but this is usually mild and, and goes away. I have actually started to do um, the HFDS prior to the FACO in some cases, which is clearly not what is recommended, but if the angle is, is wide enough and you can access it at the beginning of the procedure, um, I do it. And then after the HFDS, I do the FACO and by the end of the FACO, the bleeding has stopped. So uh, in, in patients that do not have a narrow angle, any myops or so, um, I, I sometimes do it that way. It's, it's, but that's not what is officially recommended, but uh, this is how I address the, the bleeding problem. Apart from this, um, it's an extremely safe procedure. I have not seen any hypotensive patients yet. And would you say that it's quite a versatile technology? Yes, it's 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 versatile. You can uh, do it in. You can redo it. You can do it multiple times if needed. Um, Theoretically, it can be done in faking patients. Uh, of course, there is less space. You really have the good meiosis uh, for this, but it can be done. It can be combined with any intraocular procedure. Uh, yes, it's versatile. Finally, could you tell me what specific advantages or benefits you've noticed for your patients using the HFDS technology? Well, it, it really gives you the option to lower the pressure in a significant number of patients with minimal uh, impact. So there, uh, the follow-up is, is uh, there are less number of appointments compared to any other procedure. Um, the, the recovery of vision uh, is, is much faster than in a trabeculectomy. Uh, it, it really has the benefit of a reduction of glaucoma drops, which is financially uh, interesting in, in, in depending on the system. And of course, uh, it is the benefit for the patient. Um, I also like it because there is no implant involved. So first of all, it's it's affordable and you don't leave anything uh, behind in the eye that, that may cause problems later. Um, that That's the, the benefits. 
Dr. Zutter, thank you so much for talking to me today about the HFDS technology. It's been a pleasure talking to you.